Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Coffee with Derek coming live out of uh, the studios here in Owego. Just uh, the podcast is going to come to you in a couple episodes and series. I'm thinking we're going to start off with uh, my most recent bid to getting healthy. It's going to be the topics we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to dive into the physical, mental, and uh, external aspects of everything I've been going through over the last 8 to 10 months. Um, Our goal here with the podcast is to really just help uh, inspire and encourage people to be their best. Um, I know I'm not anybody special or anything different. I have a story. I have a journey. and just want to share it with you, and hopefully uh, you can be inspired and encouraged to um, you know, be the best you you can be. Um, and I've had a huge support group along the way, and uh, I have a lot to share, a lot to talk about, and uh, I hope you guys can stay tuned and follow up, and we'll keep coming as long as you guys want to keep hearing us. So thank you. And uh, thank uh, Madison Avenue Studios for hosting the uh, the podcast with Coffee with Derek. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, just going to touch base on the last five to ten years of leading up to 2017. I'm going to try and stay current with the numbers and the years so you have something to uh, follow by. Plus, it helps keep my my notes in order. <clears throat> so, 2010. Kind of when all this started, I had blown out my back, had a surgery, uh, laminectomy, L4, L5, had severe pain down my right leg. That's kind of how this all started. And kind of went downhill from there kind of fast. 2012, I was 35 years old. I'm sorry, I was 33 years old in 2010. 2012, I was 35 years old. Uh... I'm sorry, 2012, I was 35 years old. And I ended up having two more back surgeries. I had a laminectomy L4, L5 again. And then shortly thereafter, probably about four months apart, I blew my L5 S1. Um, That one was a little more significant because that's what ultimately led me to have a mild drop foot on my right leg. Um, drop foot's just the inability to be able to pl- uh, flex my ankle and pull it up. Um, so fast forward to 2015, and I'm going to be vague on a lot of this stuff just because I just want to get the timelines down. So 2015, uh, I decided to have ankle surgery, um, unrelated injuries. I had a uh, Torn some ligaments prior, God knows when, over life. And I decided to have surgery in 2015. I was 38 years old, right ankle. Did a whole bunch of of work on it. Um, Saw a doctor. I've been to a bunch of doctors, but they had different uh, avenues of how they wanted to approach trying to repair my ankle. So I picked the guy that I thought fit best into what I wanted to do. So, um, it's, uh, it was quite the operation. I actually had two or three different procedures all at once. Um, so that was 2015. So now I'm 40 years old. It's 2017. I'm at work. I'm doing an inspection of a house in Johnson city and I fell through a flight of stairs in a basement and broke the ankle that I had surgery on in 2015. Um, which kind of catapulted me to this entire redoing of everything, uh, the health changes, the mental changes, uh, the physical change, 
um, soul, mind, body, finances, everything. I, uh, I was in a pretty bad spot. I was in a pretty hurtful spot. And, uh, so that's really what the catalyst to start this whole thing. So three back surgeries, ankle surgery, and multiple, multiple physical therapies. I can't even tell you how many times I had to go to physical therapy from 2010 to 2017. Um, nothing seemed to work. They would basically fix me up, get me someplace, and kick me out. So um, that's kind of just the backstory to getting me up to what is going to be prevalent in the conversations I'm going to have over the next couple of podcasts and the uh, massive health changes. Since 2010, really, um, my mind, my soul, everything has taken kind of a whirlwind, you know? I'm in my 30s and felt, you know, massive depression. I was lost, had a lot of anxiety. Wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do. Wasn't able to do the things I had thought I was able to do. Um, my limitations, though, I know a lot of people have a, a lot more limitations than me. But, you know, it weighs down on your head. You know, you got two kids. You're active in the community. You're doing things. I was a volunteer firefighter. Uh, you know, just rolling. And all of a sudden, every day goes by. Every year goes by. Harder and harder to keep up with what my body was doing. Actually, at one point, my doctor who did the back surgeries told me to stop using my, stop treating my body like an amusement park. Can't keep up with me. Um, <clears throat> I was tired all the time. I had a lot of self doubt, uh, things I never really struggled with, if you know me. Um, and just, just lost. I just didn't know what to do. Didn't know there was any help. Um, for years, I just struggled with. Getting out of bed in the morning, really. And just, you know, I get up and I did a systems check every morning. Like, I mean, what hurts today? You know, wh- where's my back? Where's my nerves? Um, so getting out, of, getting out of bed some days was a struggle. And then uh, 2015 was kind of the, the pulpit of my health disaster, I should say. Uh, I was the heaviest I'd ever been. Seemed like every surgery I put on 20 pounds. So... I had a couple, what, three, four, five, six surgeries by 2015. So it's like I was I was just creeping up. So my birthday, May 2015, was the heaviest recorded weight I was ever at, which was just shy of 370 pounds. Um, I was 368, 367.8 was the highest record recorded weight I could find. Um, so obviously that that weighs a lot into the depression and anxiety. And the self-doubt, you know, I kept just going up and up and up and just seemed like there was no end in sight. So 2015 um, was actually a real pivotal year I had. Um, I had got with a guy who I'm not going to use any names and places right now just because of the podcast and I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But uh, I met a guy who I'd met before. First time I met him, things didn't go over so well. Kind of just uh, walking by in a hallway, but uh, he's always been there. And uh, so 2015 comes around, and he's in my small group. And, uh, you know, he, I was in a real hurt. I was hurting bad. My back was hurting. My hips were hurting. My leg was hurting. Um, again, I was just shy of 370 pounds, and I was just, just lost. So, uh, he invited me in to talk uh, about what he does, and more specifically, he's a phys- physical therapy. And uh, he had he had some answers. He had some answers that other people never had. Um, I think the intentions were right with the previous physical therapists. You know, they want to make you better, but it was never a lasting thing. Uh, this guy had a lasting answer, which was great. So that was awesome. So it kind of gave me some hope. Um, that's kind of where things started to turn around for me. Um, I started being able to manage my pain. Um, I realized that it was really more mind over physical and, uh, he was able to help me work through that. So again, pivotal at the pulpit. I was thought I was at the top of disaster. 
you know, DEFCON 5. I didn't know what to do. And finally, I had somebody in my life that gave me some hope, um, you know, physical and mental hope. So we'll talk more about that coming up. So some physical stats. Um, 2015, again, that is really was the culmination of disaster as I look at it. I was on, I'm going to go through the list here quick. So I had to write all these down because there were so many. So my medications, so keep in mind, I'm 370 pounds, blood pressure, about 150 over 90 consistent high blood pressure. My A1C at that point was over 10, which if anybody has blood sugar, has anybody ever had those? Typically you want to be around five something. I was double um, your A1C. My, all my levels from my blood work were bad. I didn't have any good. There was nothing good. Nothing. My cholesterol was high. My good cholesterol was low. My bad cholesterol was high. My sugars were 250 consistent plus. I had fatty livers. I was in size 48 pants at 5'11", and it was just a disaster. So I was on lisinopril, bistolic for the heart. I had metformin, tansium, levomir for my sugar. Gabapentin and some Balta for the pain in my back and my leg. And then I was on my allergies, medicines, which was Q-nasal, and then Zizol. So and I know I'm missing one because I had 10 at one point. So I was on 10 medications. And not only the physical aspect of that, the mental aspect and the financial aspect was ridiculous. I mean, I felt like the people at CVS knew me better than some of my own friends because they'd see me all the time. I was there like almost every payday picking up something, um, which just stress. And, you know, it takes you, it just takes you forever to realize like this is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, so I was there, I was spending money. Thankfully we have great insurance. It wasn't that drastic, but I can only imagine when people that don't have great insurance and the financial responsibility and the financial breakdown of, you know, it's funny, I talk to people now about not being on medications. I'm on none. None of these medications I'm on except for my two allergy medications now. And it's like, you know, you just think like, oh, yeah, it's just a medication. Well, sure. But you have to pay for the medication. You have to take the time to drive there. You got to take the gas to drive there. The time out of your day. Time away from your family. It all adds up. And it's like, you know, it just got to be like a vicious cycle. Every Friday I get paid, I go get medicine. You know, it could have been anything, could have been anywhere, could have been drugs, alcohol, whatever. And I just got into, you know, getting paid, going to CVS, pick up my medications. Some of the things I'm going to talk about in the upcoming podcast is the uh, the financial aspect of being overweight. Um, I think for me, it was just a, you just do what you do. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. Um, I've never been independently wealthy. I've gotten up, go to work, do my thing. Uh, I've had a zillion different jobs. Um, But when you're you're increasing in your weight, I mean, the, the financial aspect of being overweight, really, you don't think about it when you're doing it. And for me... With all the pain and the surgeries and just the day-to-day stressors, like uh, some of the things that we talk about now with my health coaching and um, talk on my doctors and everything, like <clears throat> the the mental aspect and the triggers that you have are unmeasurable. Like it's it's unbelievable. Like I would eat out like my, my stressors were, I was a stress eater. I was a bored eater. You know, when you're stressed out, I'm stressed out cause I'm in pain every day. Um, medications didn't help. I was on so many pain meds at some points that, oh, that was the other thing I was, I forgot. Um, I don't even have the pain, the other pain meds that I would take Tylenol, ibuprofen. I mean, I was sucking those things down like M&Ms <clears throat> to try and get through the day. And, uh, you know, those things make you make you hungry. Gabapentin, the pain meds, you know, they, they make you hungry. That's just what they do. And, uh, you know, I was eating out lunch every day, just about, I didn't care. 
I was just going for whatever was quick and accessible. Um, you know, we even talk about that in our health coaching society, uh, the, the way that America is and the way that our, our whole basis of life is anymore. It's, it's what can I have and what can I have right now? Um, we are an instantaneous society. We want it. We want it now. How fast, how cheap, um, you know, and the fast food places are like the genius of now and cheap and they're everywhere. So it's convenience. It's, it's, they, they, they really hone in on your, your mindset of, of that. So if you're struggling like me and you're a busy guy, like I was, you know, I was at work and there's a McDonald's and a Burger King within eyesight of my, of my, of, uh, my office. So you're, you're running late. You got to grab something quick. Bang, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 bucks. Um, it was like nothing. Every gas station in America has places to stop. Grab this, grab that. Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, Dunkin' Donuts is like, in my opinion, one of the king or the king of convenience. They're on every freaking corner in America. Like, you can't go anywhere and not find a Dunkin' Donuts. And if you can't, you're really not looking hard enough. They're everywhere. McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, everywhere. Um, gas stations now sell everything you need. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Um, then you get into the, your, as I call them, the, uh, you know, your, your loves, you know, I love Wegman subs, love pizza, pizza joints, pizzas, like the healthy fast food, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, so, you know, you stop every day. Like I was, I was spending probably. $20 a day just grabbing stuff on the go. I never prepared any meals. I never really thought much about it. I wake up, have breakfast, and I hit the door, hit the road, and whatever happened, happened until I came home and had dinner. So I, mean, I bet you there were days I was spending an extra $20, $25 just in crap. Coffee, snacks, lunch, whatever. Um, you know, never really thought never really thought much about it just did it and then i wonder why at the end of the week i'm broke all the time and i sit down and yeah you don't care yeah you don't care but it's it's a huge it's a huge financial win for the companies when you're you know they know what your triggers are they know how your brain your how your brain reacts to things you know that's why uh mcdonald's uses the colors they do I and mean, people don't even realize that yellow and gold there's a reason why they use Red and yellow. That's your brain triggers. Um, Dunkin' Donuts. The smell, the brain triggers, the convenience. That's they, they know how our society is wired. That's why these places are multi-billion dollar industries. I mean, think about it. They're two of probably the top grossing uh, things in America right now. I mean, they're, they're huge. So, um, they definitely play well into our, into our triggers, uh, which is something, you know, you can't get around them. They're always there. Um, everybody's triggers are different, but, um, the financial aspect of being overweight, I mean, we'll just talk about food. I could talk about, <clears throat> I can give you how many different things. Well, guess what? Anything over an XL now costs more money and it's getting worse. You know, an XL shirt. Ten dollars, double XL, twelve, triple XL, fourteen, quadruple XL, which is where I was up to, four XLs, sixteen dollars. So I'm spending an extra six dollars on everything I buy, and then my shorts, my pants, everything is bigger, everything is more expensive. Um, because of the way I walked, I blow through shoes three months. Didn't matter what they were. They could be the cheapest pair of $30 shoes or a $140 pair of shoes. It didn't matter. I'd get about three months out of them. So, uh, you know, that aspect as well. I was blowing through shoes and sneakers constantly. And I am a huge proponent of the better the shoe, the less pain. So I didn't care 
if they were $150 if I didn't have to walk in as much pain every day over a $30 pair. So I bought the $150 pair three, four times a year. So you can do the math. But, um, so yeah. So now I don't, I don't spend any of that money. It's amazing that I actually have money at the end of the week. Um, and able to, uh, give it away or do something else with it. So, um, another aspect that we'll talk about, and I'll, I'll dive more into in one of the upcoming podcasts. So, you know, <clears throat> I just want to leave you guys with this today. I want to appreciate you for tuning in or I want to thank you. I appreciate that you're tuning in today. And, uh, you know, I talking to Steve here at, uh, Madison Avenue studios and, <laughs> It's crazy how how the world works and how things come back full circle. Um, Steve and I knew each other years and years and years ago, and our uh, relationship kind of just re-sparked and came up with this idea. So again, hope you guys like it. Hope you guys uh, got something out of it today. We got a lot more coming, and uh, we just want you uh, you know be inspired and encouraged to be the best you and. Um, I'm just going to say, you know, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Have a great day.